Number 49. What fraction of an iron anchor's weight will be supported by the buoyant force when submerged in salt water? All right. So in order to answer this question, right, the nature of it, it's asking for us a fraction. So uh, anytime we deal with a fraction, it's always some number or something over something else, right? Now, the key critical question in this problem is, well, it's what over what? Where do the things go? Well, you might say, well, I know what two things we're talking about, right? We're talking about the iron anchor's weight, and we're also talking about the buoyant force. But which one goes where? Which one goes on the bottom? Which one goes on the top? What do you think? Well, it's basically going to be this, that the buoyant force goes on the top, and the anchor... Uh, the iron anchor's weight, so I'll just say the weight of the iron, Fe, will go on the bottom. Why is that the case? Well, it's very critical that you understand this term of. Okay, let me ask you a question. What fraction of your time do you spend studying? And you might say, well, of what time? Of the time I'm not sleeping? Of the time I'm, of the total time I have in a day? Right? Of the time I have over the week? What? So if I said, what fraction of the total time throughout the day? Do you spend studying? You would say something like, you know, I spend, you know, nine hours out of my 24-hour day studying. Right? I, I, know, I know it's not nine hours, but um, you, you would say something along these lines, right? Where you would have the, I asked you what fraction of the hours of the day that went on the bottom, right? And then what I'm asking you for went on the top. So it's the same idea here. Whenever they ask you for a fraction of something, this something goes on the bottom. And then the other item will go on the top. Easy. Okay, now we have this set up. It's the weight of iron. All right, so let's actually first deal with the buoyant force. What is the buoyant force? Well, remember that the buoyant force is equal to, okay, buoyant force will be equal to uh, the weight of the um, fluid, the weight of the fluid that is displaced. Okay. So when we, uh, if we look at the picture over here, when we take our iron anchor and drop it into the water, the volume of this anchor displaces the an equal amount of volume of water. Okay. Now, although the volumes are the same, the the masses might be different, right? Because they have different densities. But that's the idea of buoyant force. So what I realize is that taking this fraction, I'm now going to realize, I'm now going to write that we have this is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, which is, what's the fluid displaced in this problem? It's just water, right? So I'll say it's the weight of the water displaced divided by then the weight of the iron, okay? So let's work with this now. Let's expand on the weights. You know what weights are, right? It's just mass times gravity. So this is the mass of the uh, water that's displaced times gravity divided by the mass of the iron times gravity. So gravity, gravity, right? They Gravity goes bye-bye. So now we don't know the mass and we don't know the we don't know either mass, right? But we do know the density. So now what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about, well, how do I get how do I get density into this particular equation? Well, I could probably use this top one, right? And I can solve this top one for mass. If I solve the top one for mass, it looks like it's going to work out to be that mass is equal to density times then the volume. So what I'm going to do is substitute each of or this equation in for each of these uh, terms. Okay, in other words, let me just move this on over to the right-hand side here. I mean, these are all equal, so actually I'll just keep working down. So now what I realize is that it's the mass of the water is equivalent to saying the density of the water multiplied by the volume of the water displaced, right? These are uh, divided then by the density of the iron multiplied by the volume of the iron. And what did we say before about when you take this anchor... Take, uh, come on, take this anchor and you dump it into the water. Whatever volume this anchor is, right, whatever the volume is here, will displace an equal volume of water. In other words, the volume of the iron, if it's fully submerged, and that's what it says, when submerged, will equal the volume of the water that was displaced. This is always true when the object is fully submerged. It is not true when the object is not fully submerged. So if these two are equal, then that means this in terms of my formula is equal, right? So they go bye-bye. So look what you're left with. I mean, here's such a simple idea, right? We start simple, we get a little more complex, but then we end simply, right? We have the density of the water divided by then the density of the iron. 
and that's it. This is your fraction. That's it. So remember, it's salt water we're talking about. So the density is 1025 over. Just make sure you're using similar units. I don't care if you use grams per milliliter or kilogram per cubic meter. It doesn't matter. Just be consistent. Over then the density of the iron, which is 7800. And what do we get? So 1025 divided by 7800. Easy peasy. So this is about 0.13, right? In terms of a fraction, it's 0.13. If you had to answer it in percentage terms, you would have 13 uh, 13%. Okay. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped you out. Uh, please help us out by subscribing, hitting that like button too, and telling your friends. All right. We appreciate it so very much. And uh, thank you.